We're still on the breakfast and plus CV Africa. It's time for us to uh, take a look at the front pages of the national dailies. We call it off the press. Ezekiel Unyai took us here this beautiful Thursday morning. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us. Thanks for having me and what a lovely smile you have there. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Uh, we start off with the Nation newspaper. I mean, the headlines uh, this morning are quite predictable. Uh, Tunubu, let's work together to stop the PDP from taking power. And some people have queried some of these statements that have been put out. Is that exactly the situation of things? So we're looking at you know solving the problems that Nigeria is plagued with. Uh, underneath, how he won APC tickets, governors, uh, Lawan, Atiku, Kwankwaso, Fire Me, uh, Uba, or the Salute Standard Bearer. That's what you find this morning underneath uh, the uh, rider. Another says 48 jostle for the Alafin throne, and 40 killed, 61 injured in our terror attack. UBA redeems $500 million uh, euro bond notes. And Roar, that's Gannett Roar, uh, lets Eagle on invading uh, Leon Stars. I hope I got that correctly. And just before we move away from the Nation newspaper this morning, banks and firms in 11 billion Naira deals at Nigerian Exchange. And that's it this morning on the Nation newspaper. Let's quickly turn our attention to the punch this morning with the following headlines. The big one there, Tinubu to meet with APC governors as race for running mate begins. It's interesting to see how that will play out. The writers to that headline, Tinubu scores 1,271 votes, picks APC ticket, defeats Oshibajo, Amechi, others. Bagudu-led PGF has a task to pick competent deputy for Ashiwaju ex-governor's spokesman. All right, indeed, um, the Ashiwaju himself had some very, very nice words for Bagudu, who was with him on stage right there at the Eagle Square in Abuja. Adamo, governors, hailed Tinubu's victory. Atiku in closed-door meeting with PDP governors. Here's an infographic on how the voting by the delegates at the APC presidential special convention went. More from the punch. NNPC to pay 80, 874 billion naira in June as subsidy hits 1.82 trillion naira. I think they're reminding us that that matter is still there. Uh, our massacre, death toll hits 40 at Kiridalu Plans Memorial Park. Sad, really sad one. FG shouldn't have set up Nigeria Air. This is coming from an ex nama boss, Iyai. MAN, that's the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, uh, tackles CBN over 1 trillion naira low interest loan and there's a picture of the man now called affectionately Mephi um, on social media as uh, Gordon Mephi has his picture somewhere there. FG orders Nigerian ambassadors to woo strategic investors. Uh, NIN registration surges over same ban and 10 million Nigerians captured according to the NIMC. Nigerian-American surgeon jailed for 27 years, or jailed 27 years for fraud. Customs deep in probe on seized foreign rice, others. And two more ladies accused Lagos Bishop of rape, narrate ordeal. Final, from, finally, from uh, The Punch, uh, North doesn't fear restructuring, mustn't be seen as, as Nigeria's problem, Suleiman CNG spokesman. And the Peter B's ex-aid emerges Labour Party factional a presidential candidate. Indeed, that is the case. It was once a, an APGA official, chairman of the party in, in that state. Well, uh, we'll move away from the punch. Let's take a quick look at the leadership newspaper this morning. 2023 presidency after clinching APC ticket, Tunubu faces running mate huddle. Uh, Dogara, Mustafa, Gandu, J. Erufai tipped for vice president and uh, some persons are already saying, uh, would there be uh, a consideration of the Muslim Muslim tickets at this point in time? Nigerian back on track with my emergence. The flag bearer is quoted to say, Presidents Muhammad Buhari, Lawan, Governors Bajabi Amila, Aregbe Shola, Adamu congratulates Ashiwaju. 
is no match for a tiku, says the PDP. Ohaneze to meet over a tiku, uh, Tunimbu's emergence. Uh, these are the riders you find underneath the board caption. Now, debt toll in our war killings, 72 on door plans, mass bearer. First quarter, Niger's debt rises by 2 trillion naira to 41.6 trillion naira. Now, that's a lot. 2022, Hijra uh, airlift of 16,000 intending pilgrims begins today. Federal government hands over 92 billion naira Abuja airport and second runway site to the CCCECC. Uh, you have uh, like the CCCECC. Uh, these are the headlines you have underneath the board caption. Let's uh, round things off for the headlines coming on the front page of the Guardian this morning. Tinubu inches closer to lifelong ambition, um, the paper referring to his words when he addressed the press after meeting with President Buhari to inform uh, the president of his ambition. Uh, more from the Guardian newspaper this morning. 2023, anger in Igbo land over APC, PDP snob. Bellows campaign kicks, kicks flays highly compromised APC presidential primary. Terrorists in helicopter kill 32 shell houses church in southern Kaduna. Ondo government, Catholic Church, plan memorial park mass burial for all victims. And Marwa seeks drug tests for youth core members. Uh, some of the headlines right there on the front page of the Guardian. Welcome at this point, our guest analyst for this morning, Ezekiel Nyaitu, is a public affairs analyst. Uh, Mr. A architect Nyaitu, thanks for your time. Uh, can you hear us, Ezekiel and I took? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Fantastic. Um, I don't know if you can before we get into the thick of things, it, um, it seems you and others conspired uh, to revenge on us as uh, Tim Budi to Buhari by keeping us awake last night at the ADC um, uh, primaries. Uh, it, it, it was the unexpected, a highly unexpected it, outcome. Um, Kingsley Mualu and uh, Chukuka Moye the two leaders, as far as the public were concerned, did not get the ticket. What happened? Um, there's a difference between party primaries and general election. The dynamics work a little different. In party primaries, what you do, if you are a political strategist, is you target the delegates, you get to them, you talk to them, you sell yourselves to them, you show them why you would be in a better position to take on the opposition. You tell them where your strategic advantages are, and at the end of the day, when the, the, the delegates meet, they take a decision on who will actually help them. Now, Chuku Kamoye and um, uh, my, my brain, Professor Mohan, they are amazing. As a matter of fact, we had, I mean, if you listen to the pitch like you did from all of them, we had at the very least five people, at the very least, who could take on Nigeria and these people very, very effectively. ADC ought to be very proud, like we are very proud. But coming back to the question, you know, Chuku Kamoye and um, Professor Kingsley Mohandu, let me limit myself to these two, they, they, they did well with respect to public appeal. But in terms of giving the, 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 the members of the party that comfort that they have the capacity to take on the system, and they were going to be willing to fight, they did not do that. So we have two amazing candidates who did not perform as much as people expected. The, the margin of victory was pretty wide, extremely wide, if you looked at it. My brother Moye had about uh, over 300, 
uh, Mogalu had over 500, while um, um, Dumevi Kachiku had close to 1,000. Now, the second thing that happened was that something that they all ought to be very proud of themselves is that we refused to monetize the process. So no money was shared. I can say that with every sense of responsibility. But I think that Dumebi Kachiku is the only person, to the best of my knowledge, that PDP in particular is scared stiff of. The reason is that from inception of PDP, he has always been a member of their strategy room. When he left the PDP, the PDP was worried. So he is he's a political strategist. And when he outlined how he was going to win the election, how he was going to beat PDP, you know, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the members of the party were very convinced, very, very convinced. Number one, he has very in-depth knowledge of of the political system in Nigeria. He has an amazing understanding of PDP. And you know, APC is actually PDP too, okay? You understand what I mean. So if you understand inception, it means you have a good understanding of both PDP and APC because like I said earlier, PDP is the, you know, APC is PDP too. They are just a certain pairs of people who is the chairman of APC to our one, two, three downline national working committee members, if you trace their background, they trace it back to PDP. And these are the people that he has been you know, strategizing for all the years. So what happened wasn't um, people who didn't do well. It was more of somebody who understood the system better and worked the system better. And when you understand such a person, you can see that um, we are in for a good time, so to speak, you know, on account of... Uh, what is going to bring to the table in the campaign is coming. So he, 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 we never saw, you know, the type of Twitter analysis and trying to sell oneself. You know, we never saw the posts, the kind of posts that we saw from of ideas and trying to sell not just oneself but the party ADC by King, especially Professor Mogalu, and also you know the media razzmatazz of uh, Chikuka Moye to sell himself and the ADC from. Um, do maybe uh, Kachiku we never saw any of that, but he ended up winning, <laughs> winning the um, uh, the the race. I think this should be a, a political a learning curve uh, for our candidates who have good ideas and think, like you saying, that the ideas alone can win them uh, the ticket. Uh, before Messi comes in, let's use that and link that to a headline on the front page of uh, the Guardian that says 2023 anger in Igbo land uh, or Igbo land over APC PDP snub. Um, I think maybe the anger um, can be, this, this headline can also be linked to uh, the fortunes of Peter B and the Labour Party as um, someone who is a member of his foundation party, ABGA, in Anambra State, who was an aide on political and politics and strategy to Willie Obiano, the man Peter B handed over to, and is said to have been um, a chief of protocol to Peter B in his first term as governor of Anambra State, has been elected um, as his own nemesis. Um, the presidential candidate of a rival faction of Labour Party, and the case is in court, said to be heard uh, on April 30th as the agenda date. I want to link this <laughs> this to what we see on the front page of the Guardian. There's anger in Igbo land. You see, um, if if you if you you know the Bible talks about the sons of Issachar that have that competence and capacity to discern the signs of the times, okay? If you look at what is going on and you really sit back and watch the analysis and do a projection, one thing that comes very clear is that 2023 is going to be like a DC convention. You don't see it coming and it hits you hard. If you look at the so-called top contenders, PDP, APC, you, you take the people involved, Jagaban and Atiku, you can very easily put them in one box. 
the only person that was trying to breathe would have been a man like Peter Obi and see what is coming on. Except the Igbos, let me use that word generally, the Southeasterners rally round and bring him back to the ballot without, um, you know, early enough. You may realize that a man that was highly celebrated in the absence of the new kids on the block might just get so distracted that that momentum he was trying to generate is lost on legal tussles. And when people come up and not sure whether you will be the one or you will not be the one because being the eventual candidate is hinged on a lot of INEC technicalities. If at the end of the day your faction is not the recognized faction or the legal, you know, well, if, if <laughs> one arm of this uh, political setup is the judiciary. And if PDP or APC actually see Peter B as a major threat, they can work well with the judiciary to get some judgments that can just make you shake your head and wonder if all is well. At the end of the day, this legal tussle, you know, hanging around the neck of Mr. Peter B could be a major distraction. To that extent, it is where the road is being cleared. It's like in a quiet state. And by the way, where is my congratulations? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you emerged. Wow. Congratulations. 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 Um, uh, you. Your Excellency. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. All right. Uh, um, we need to, I mean, continue just before... Uh, we call it a wrap this morning on uh, the, the papers. I've been talking about off the press. Very interesting. You have talked about distractions and all distractions on the nation newspaper. Uh, Bola Agumotinabu, former governor of Lagos State, is saying, let's work together to stop the PDP from taking power. That's on the one side. I think that we have dwelt so much on politics. But let's move on to the economy. Now, on the is leadership you know? newspaper, uh, it talks about the increase. In the first quarter, our debt profile has increased from 2 trillion naira to 41.6 uh, trillion naira. That's a lot. I mean, that's so much. How did we even get here? What, what's even going on with the Nigerian economy in terms of, you know, our debt profile? How do we, you, how do you even move as a person or as a country from two point, I mean, two trillion naira to to forty one point six trillion naira? I mean, you can see I'm struggling to even um, understand that. You see, the time has come when. You know, when, when, when the mainstream media get fixated on this APC, PDP, APC, PDP, they don't quite understand the issues that we are facing. We need to look at the Nigeria, look at the economy, look at the dynamics, look at the paradigms, look at the implications, you know, of what is going on. We live on a borrowing economy, you know, and not an economy that looks at what we have, look at what must be done. We just, we just, we don't have a thinking governance, what I call cerebral governance. I need money. I don't have money. Can I print more money? No, you can't print. Can I borrow? Yes, borrow. And they're like, boom just rush to borrow. They don't think in terms of waiting to lay certain foundations based on certain fundamentals to have economy that works for all on the long run. This is what the new kids on the block are going to bring to our governance. And within the month of, this is the month of May, mark my word, within the month of July, August, there's going to be a completely different paradigm of conversations. I've looked at, let me be an analyst this time, uh, as always, and not just a party man, by crossing certain lines to other parties. I listened to the young man from YPP, 
and he's bringing something to the block. I listened to the guy the other time, he was correcting me that the factional is DP, but I still come back to Wale Adewale. And you need to listen to him. I listened to Dumebi Kachiko of ADC. These are people that are bringing sound bites that the young people can relate to. And maybe the time we have to talk about Dumebi Kachiko some more, I'll tell you what political strategizing is all about. Perspective planning is all about. This is what these people are going to bring to our politics. And nobody's going to talk about Atiku, um, uh, um, Jagaban. As how does that put food on the tables of the man in the village? How does that secure the future of the youth? People want to hear new sound bites. All right, is it going to provide that back on the table? We have to let you go at this point in time. I mean, I wish we had more time to talk about all of this, especially uh, the headlines on our national dailies. Unfortunately, we've been prompted to, you know, to uh, move on. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. And once again, congratulations for emerging as the governorship uh, candidate for your party. Thank you and God bless you. Let's see. As they say, with, uh, with uh, Nigerian politics, the more you look, the less you see. But exactly. Indeed, indeed. Um, a lot of things that will happen going forward, like um, I guess I just said, will, will shock people. Will shock people. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what you think you know or what you think you see may not be the case. But you know how it is. I mean, really, if you look at it, a lot of times that we expect to get the shockers, we get shocked. We, 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 we should know. discuss this ADC matter in there because um, we can we can put them in the studio to tell us what happened. Why not? Yeah, we should discuss. But uh, we'll be right back. Let's let's take a short break. The breakfast continues after we uh, tell you what happened today in history.